Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Answer. Well, we've been through trumpets, and we're on Yom Kippur coming up here at the turn of next week. We are the set apart one of question is. These are the humble beginnings, a little old straight way. Look at that. And you can, you can go through that and you can go ahead and, and cut it in less than half of the original people that are still here. Y'all sit down for a minute. All y'all original people that was here at the beginning, like that, stand up. You got, see, three of them in a the radio room. And look at it. You see what I mean? Less than half. Y'all get it? Is that not less than half? That's less than half. You seeing that? Out of that. And, 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 I, and, and because out of, out of that, y'all's done birth 14 communities, yes. untold amount of homesteads, got you and people. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? See that? Y'all y'all can be seated. Y'all see that? That's all that's left out of that. I couldn't find all of them and stuff, so then it starts growing a little bit here the next year. Then we start getting to 2013. Then it gets up to 14. Then it gets to 15. Then it gets on up to 18. And I couldn't find the rest of the pictures because I was too busy getting to the message. Hallelujah. So y'all's good, ain't it? All right, the commandments. The Day of Atonement is a national day of repentance for us set-apart Israelites. However, this day in y'all's time and, and calendar has not taken place just yet. Oven Shemot, 3118, and he gave unto Moshe when he had made an end of communion with him upon the Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony. Tables of stone, and how were they written? Written with the what? The finger of Yah. Yah wrote on them stones himself. Are you following me? So you think if it's etched in stone, that means eternal, right? Everlasting, perpetual, ain't changing. Yah wrote them. And people leave you because you started keeping them. Uh-oh. Didn't he say he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Didn't he say, I'm Yahweh, your Elohim, and I change not. Therefore, your sons of Jacob not consumed. Don't the book say that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? Don't change. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's the reason why we can serve him, because we, we already know what to expect of him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Yahweh was speaking unto Moses, say, uh, unto Moshe, this is Shemot 31, 34, 1. Hew two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables those words that were in the first tables which you broke. You know the reason why uh, uh, Moses broke them, right? He was up on the mount. And, and, and then the Israelites started picking up the Egyptian pagan ways and started having uh, revelings and parties and, and carrying on. And, and, um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, Aaron 
said that this golden calf just jumped out of the fire. Don't even know how, even though he took up all the gold and silver from people and he, he just flat out lied to Moses and said, this, this calf just jumped up out of the fire, Moses. I don't know how it got here. And the people started accrediting a golden calf as their deliverer, the one who got them out of Mizraim. And so Moses said, you ain't even worthy of these. And he threw the stones down on top of the idol. You know that? So he had to go back up to the mountain again. Oh, did I finish that? Yep. Verse 28. And he was there with Yahweh. Forty days and forty nights he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the word of the covenant of the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass that when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses risked not that the skins of his face shone while he talked with them. In other words, Moses had been in the presence of the Most High and they couldn't even look on him. So Moses would have to veil himself because of the glory of Yah was all over him. Can you imagine that? Moses had even veiled himself after being in the presence of y'all that time because the people couldn't look up on him. But then the book says when he would go back up to speak with Yahweh that he would unveil himself again. So in Leviticus from the scriptures verses 16, 29, and it shall be for you a law forever that in the seventh new moon and on the tenth day of the new moon you afflict your beings. And do no work, the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For on that day, he makes atonement for you to cleanse you, to be clean from all your sins before Yahweh. It is a what? So Sunday people wouldn't know what that is. The Sunday ain't the Sabbath. See, they wouldn't know what it is. Sabbath means it's, it's a set apart appointed time, commanded time. It's a Sabbath of rest. For you and you shall do what? Afflict your being. You're supposed to be in a mourning state, a mournful state. Are you following me? And a law just until the New Testament comes. You see how nonsensical this stuff is? It's a law for that means even when the kingdom comes, we're still going to be Celebrating these feasts. And the priest who is anointed and ordained to serve as priest in his father's place shall make an atonement. He shall put on the linen garments and set apart garments, and he shall make an atonement for the, the holy sanctuary. There's got to be atoned for. Are you following me? And he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. See, this is corporate. This is not only just for us. This is everything that has to do with worship. And the altar, he shall make an atonement for the priest and for the people of the what? Congregation. So this priest had to be busy. That's what Jesus did for us. Jesus did all that for us. Y'all hear that? He atoned for everything for us. And this shall be for you a law for to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as Yahweh commanded Moshe. This is a nation day of humbling and afflicting ourselves and a time of reflection. The day of atonement is a national day of repentance for us set apart Israelites. And we go again. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe saying, on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, it shall be a set-apart gathering for you, and you shall afflict your beings, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. And on the tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a set-apart gathering for you, and you shall afflict your beings, and you shall bring an offering made by fire. You do 
no work on the same day, for it is the day of atonement to make an atonement for you before Yahweh your Elohim. For any being who is not afflicted, see, that's, I mean, not only just when we get to the fasting part of you, not even afflicted, you're not even mournful. You're not downcasted. You're full of foolishness and frivolity. Even that, look what he says. That same day he shall be cut off from his people. And any being who does any work on that same day, that being shall be destroyed from the midst of his people. You do no work, a law forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It is a Sabbath of rest to you, and you shall afflict your beings on the ninth day of the month at eve. From evening to evening, you observe your Sabbath. See, here's the uncomfortable part. That this European nation, see, when I tell you I'm not a European, I'm not saying I'm not a European because I'm not white. What I'm saying, I'm not a European because I'm not nowhere anywhere near their damn culture. Because you can be a European and be any color. So when I say I'm, a, I'm not a European, I don't have nothing to do with a pagan culture. That make sense? So, here's the part of the European, and, and Americans come from Europe. Alright? And, and uh, all different parts of the globe. And then they've colonized us and tried to make us think, you, you think I shed one damn tear for the queen? Every time I seen that shit, I cut it off. I said, now the queen getting ready to go meet the king. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't know of what that, what that monarch could be doing. If I was to tell y'all some of the stuff he'd be doing, oh, come on, pass out. Never mind. Never mind. And it really appalled me when I'm sitting up there seeing black folks uh, crying over a white queen dad dying. I bet, I bet, I guarantee you, I bet y'all won't get that on the Day of Atonement from them. I'm trying to figure out in America, why in the hell you flying the American flag half mass from somebody we had to whoop their ass to get them from oppressing us with taxes? We went to war against that damn country. To so-called allegedly gain our independence. That's, Corn Wallace, man, will turn over in his grave. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Europeans just child don't want to hear. See, all of these people running around masquerading as Israel and the Christians playing church. This is the day your world, as you know it, is going to be destroyed, and we will inherit the land back again. Y'all hearing this? Y'all turn me up just a little bit up here, all right? Turn me up up here, Elder Doug. And what amazes me is all of these talking heads today, none of them mention the type of destruction that will be taking place on this day. See, what Christians done is divorce themselves away from Yah. They want to accept biblical principles because it's going to give them a nice, you know, better lifestyle. Not that they intended on being obedient to them. So they want to, you know, just do away with his word. We, got, we can't say all these things that, you know what I mean, because, you know, God is a good God. Yeah, he is. That's why he got to kill you, because he's good. Wasn't he, wasn't he still good when he opened up the earth and swallowed up Cora Dathan in the barrel? Wasn't he still good when he destroyed the Egyptians? Wasn't he still good when he smitten 70,000 Israelites because David decided to number the people? Wasn't he still good? Yeah, he's still good. He just ain't playing. And see, in this Season from the impalement, the resurrection, up until this point, it's got the whole world duped and deceived, thinking that y'all don't even exist no more. 
He already told the world he's not going to do all this stuff in front of the whole world for everybody to see. It's only going to be done amongst his people. That's why we get delivered, we get healed, we get set free. We get... Can y'all put some volume on this again? I, I really need y'all to turn this up. I can tell because my voice starts hurting. That means I'm straining too much. All the proud will be destroyed who hate us and who have the faith of Yah and keep the commandments. Y'all understand that this world, they don't love you. They don't love you. And people of the world don't love you. Anyone who does not observe this day will be cut off from the people. The day of vengeance. Over in Romans 12, 19, it says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, save the master. Now, you got to read it in context. He's not telling you that anytime somebody want to perpetuate evil against you or whoop your ass that you just give place and let them beat the hell out of you. You already know. We're going to turn the other cheek. Go learn what that meaneth. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of Yahweh is upon me because this is what Jesus said. He have anointed me to preach the message to the poor and he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach, to preach. That's what the spirit sent to do, to do, right? To the captives and to recover the sight of the blind to set at liberty them that are what? Bruised to preach the acceptable year of Messiah. And he closed the book. He closed the book showing that the spring feast, he came to fulfill every single one of them. You already know this, right? And then he went and sat down and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? Huh? That's that's what, yep, that's what. Kick off classic. That started the war between Jesus and the religious scribes and Pharisees and the organizations of that day. Told you Jesus was a revolutionary. He's 100% about his father's kingdom. He wasn't trying to teach nobody to be Roman Catholic. He wasn't trying to teach nobody to follow Judaism. No, he wasn't. Just follow him. Hallelujah. He, he get it over here, but he stopped at this part. See, because the New Testament don't carry on where he stopped at. So you have to go back to the prophets where he was quoting from. So he can see the part that he stopped at because this is the season we're in. Yes. Are you following me? To proclaim the acceptable year of Yah and the day of vengeance of our Yah and to comfort all and mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called the trees of righteousness. The planning of Yahweh that he may be glorified. Y'all get this? See, the day of vengeance is his day. That's why he closed the book, but see, he's coming back because he has to fulfill trumpets. He has to fulfill the day of atonement and Sukkot tabernacles. See, we don't know the day or hour but we can know the season that he's coming back. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? And they shall build the old waste places. And they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. See, after you get finished destroying everything, he, he's going to bring this kingdom here to this earth. We're going to rebuild and do things. Are you following me? And then we're going to have all these, these people that, that were left alive. Are you following me? They're going to be a wine, a vine dressers. They're going to be out there throwing feed to our flocks. 
They're going to see you and go, that is the planning of Yah. That he is. That, them are the redeem of Yah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> see, you ain't going to, you're not going to hear about that in Christianity, see, because that world is going to be over with. We got next. We got next. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be beautiful. That's why I be asking, where are people going? Where you going? Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowsmen and your vine dressers. You know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to give me a reclining chariot. And I'm going to have me, I'm gonna, in my chariot, I'm going to have me a, a bunch of reservoirs to hold all this wine. Merlot over here. Chardonnay over here. Red blend over here. Hey, servant. Bring me some of them grapes over here. Let me inspect them real quick. Why don't you ever hear about that in church? It's in the prophets. That's why I'm asking, where are you going? The book said that it's the Father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Where are you going? <laughs> they will be your plowman and your vine dressers, but ye shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of Yah. <laughs> and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory, you shall boast yourselves. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? Y'all think y'all can do that part? I, I think I can do that part pretty good. Don't you think you can do that part? I mean, I can get used to this. I have not seen, you have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man what y'all has prepared for them that love him. Huh? In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But I go and prepare a place for you. That wherever I am, where he, is he going to be in heaven or is he coming back to his earth? Down on his earth. There you may be also. How we know he coming here? Because the meek shall inherit the earth. <laughs> and what does the psalmist say? The earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> And for your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Everlasting joy. <laughs> Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal. Good to see that reminds me I need to go over the seals, the trumpets, and the vows. All right? When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yah, which had the testimony, for, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, oh Yahweh? Now wait a minute. If they're in a if they're in a grave sleep, why are they crying out? Ha! 
How long, O Yahweh, holy and true, do as you not judge and avenge our blood on them? And remember, where's the altar at? Right now it's in Shemaim. And white robes were given unto them, every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should not rest, they should rest yet for a little season until the fellow servants also and their brethren should be what? Killed as they were should be fulfilled. So what does that mean? Well, that means a lot of us are going to have to die because they're waiting on us. Huh? And of course, I know it seems I know it seems crazy, but it's not. The book even tells us the method of death that's going to be reinstituted here on this earth again. They're going to bring the guillotine back out. Off with your heads. I told you what I'm going to do. Y'all want to hear it again? I told you I'm going to do. Because, see, by that time, you know, they're going to be after us. They're going to be hunting us down, boy. Uh, they're going to bring us up there and I'm going to look. Who is this asshole think that that damn guillotine can cut this neck off? Let me tell all y'all to think y'all got some type of damn power. I tell you what, don't, don't y'all worry about it. I'll go first. I'm going to show you I'm going to break every last one of them damn guillotines when it, 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 it comes down on my neck. And then after I break them guillotines, I'm coming for you. And you know what's going to happen, right? As soon as that first guillotine come down, my head going to roll. <laughs> it's going to spin. Oh, you follow me? I don't be talking crap just to make sure that my head get, don't get chopped off. I got some brothers and sisters waiting on me. <laughs> huh? Wait, no. And you know, you know as much as crap as we talk, we talk, man, they're going to want us to get up and get, get him to the front of the line right now. You think about it. You see my head chopped off, you'll run to get in line. Oh, that pastor gone, let's go. You got to read the book. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she shaketh of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll. Now imagine looking up and all of a sudden that thing rolls back like a scroll. You're going to really realize that we are here in a temporary state then. Huh? When it's rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains. Now, in other words, the presidents, the prime ministers, the billionaires. Yeah, that's right, the rulers of nations. That's what they're talking about. This is what they going to say. Biden, Putin, Merkel, Trump, Dump, Obama. 
Huh? For real? Definitely Clinton. Bush. Kings of the earth. Are you following me? All these people ruling nations. Look what's going to happen. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. What are they hiding for? Well, first of all, they see that sky rolling back. Automatically, they're going to know that they ain't ready. Look what he says. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Can you imagine they're actually going to talk to a mountain and ask the mountain to kill them? And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see? Make no mistake about it. They know he's coming. Oh yeah, they do. And they teach their children that too. They know he's coming. And they're trying to look for a quick death. Ain't going to happen though. But there's also going to be a time that death is going to escape people. You're going to put a gun to your head and blow it off. And, it's still, and all you're going to do is walk around with a hole in your head. It's going to be a time according to the book that, get, that people are going to try to die and will never die. You're going to try to put a, a you're going to stab yourself in the heart and all you're going to do is run around with a knife in your heart. But you ain't going to die. Woo! I, don't, we'll go over all this. We'll go over all this. Huh? For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? None but the righteous. So this world know they got it coming. And the armies of this world and earth, they know that there's going to be a, a, a war in the valley of Jehoshaphat. They do know. There's going to be something else. You're going to see a, a united kingdom front of the, all the nations of this world with the Manasseh at the head of it. And they're going to try to take their cardinal weapons and try to destroy the him, him, the one that has rolled back the sky and come. Y'all have to understand. You see, this is what happens. So, so, so y'all can get a picture of this. See, once that sky starts rolling back and they see the king, now we're able to put the scriptures together. Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. See, the dead gonna go first. Then we, we are alive and remain. We shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. So when the king come, we coming. <laughs> huh? And all he's going to do to be able to destroy, oh, it's going to be the greatest nuclear holocaust you ever seen in your life. All the thing the king going to do is just show up. And all the armies and the people thereof, they're going to melt with fervent heat. And the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridle. Now you see the reason why the prophet says we have to go and build back the old waste places? But we ain't going to be building. We're going to have our service to build. <laughs> Is this all starting to come together now? That's why I ask people, where you going? Where you going? <laughs> they have afflicted. In Y.A. 1631, and it's a Sabbath of rest for you, and you shall afflict your beings for uh, a law forever. Now, the word afflicts means humbling, depressed, literally abase yourself with gentleness and hurt. In other words, you know, it's a time of reflection. Because remember, our sins were only covered up from year to year. They had to go and do this ceremony every single year. 
Huh? And when you start thinking about that and all the sins of the way people have done, our people have done in the past, the way we have done. Are you following me? It can't help you to make you nothing but grateful to think that only just one drop of Jesus' blood is able to atone for all of our sins, iniquity, and transgressions. Huh? Scriptures define themselves through the actions of our ancient people because some people take issue with afflicting. You know, anytime somebody don't want to fast, they're always going to take issue. They're going to find some type of way to skirt around afflicting. Psalms 35, 11, false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They reward me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. And my prayer returned into my own bosom. So the way that David humbled himself was what? Fasting. To abstain from food. Fasting. Ezra, in 821, then I proclaim a fast. And there at the river of Hava, that we might afflict ourselves. So if people are having a hard time understanding, if you want to try to get over there and confuse semantics of words and, and, and make up all kinds of stuff, you understand what I mean? All you have to do is just look at how they interpret it by their lifestyle. It's defining its own self. Before our Yah, to seek him the right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. Nehemiah 1.4, and it came to pass. Well, I heard these words. Uh, sit down and wept and mourn certain days and fasted and prayed before Yah of heaven. Luke 21, 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee unto the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out of it. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For these be the days of what? that all things which are written might be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, that prophecy has come to pass as far as Jerusalem is owned by Gentiles. Them Ashkenazis are not the real Yehudims. They're fake Jews. They're Ashkenazis. They're Israelis. So that's the prophecy of the real Israelites being dispersed throughout all the nations, just like he said. And then the Gentiles come in masquerading as if they're Israel and they're not Israel. And so now Jerusalem is being trodden down of the Gentiles. So, keeping feast day. During the seventh month, we are rehearsing for the Messiah's return. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it says, For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Yah, and the dead and the Messiah shall rise first, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. It's going to be a lot of trumpets blowing. It ain't going to be one of these little... Uh, Tornado side rings on a pole. This is coming from yeah. Oh yeah. The whole world gonna be going. Where that come from? They ain't gonna know. Dumb Christians ain't gonna know. They don't read this stuff. <laughs> they want to preserve people from the pain of the coming of Yah. What pain? Feels good to me. Glad to know. You understand know I me? Mean? Oh, oh, it may be too much for them. No, it's going to be too much for them when them trumpets start blowing and they don't know nothing. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven unto the other. Our salvation and atonement comes only through the shed blood of the Messiah. We are obedient Israelites to the covenant which Yahweh gave our fathers. So stop letting outside of the covenant questions those outside of the covenant question you and your commitment to Yah. When someone's questioning you, always answer back with a question. Ain't that how the Messiah did it? Who told you you're obligated to answer questions? 
Huh? As a matter of fact, the book says foolish and unlearned questions avoid because they do gender what? Most people just want to get in a theological argument with you. Not that they're really searching for the truth, want to know the truth. They just want to argue. Just want to be contentious. The word is already trying to preserve us from unregenerated men. You understand what I mean? So start carrying yourselves like kings and priests. Hallelujah. Our kingdom rule is next here on this earth and Satan will be bound. And Hazum 20 verse 1, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. You know what that means, right? That means there'll be no sin on the earth for a thousand years. Let me give you an example. Y'all want an example? Okay, so you're already going to be in a position of rulers. Are you following? The king going to be in Jerusalem. He's going to probably let us pick a parcel of land. Who knows? Gideon wants Ohio. I don't know. <laughs> okay, he probably gonna let us pick a parcel of land. Or who knows where he want to put? We don't care as long as we're in the kingdom, right? You know, right? And there will be no sin on his earth. So that means when we tell our servants, I tell you what, go get me them grapes. No black, no back talk. There won't be no sign. Or no murmuring. Men really gonna love this. Ain't that right, man? Y'all hear that, sisters? I didn't say nothing. (laughs) And they're going to cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Then, after that, he'll be loose for a season. And it stops, at least right here. But what is going to happen, he's going to be loose for a season to go and deceive some more people because those people that are left alive, they're going to get an opportunity just like we did to choose you this day, whom you're going to serve. And then after that, the Most High is going to throw him into the lake. And all the people that chose to serve him, and then he's going to destroy this old heaven and his old earth. He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, and so shall we ever be with God. Now, do you know the reason why he has to create a new heaven and new earth? Because he has to create a place where Satan ain't never had his feet. Huh? And see, and then it will never be no remembrance of any former things of old. Hallelujah. So you should have your mind made up to go all the way. So next, we're going to be in Sukkot. Y'all get a chance? I want y'all to read Zechariah 14, verse 16 through 19, okay? Start off with that before we get to the message on the Feast of Tabernacles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Are you following me? Yes, Knowing that everything about this life is designed to try to make you faint. Ask yourself all the time, where are you going? Remember, 
Jesus said to the disciples, will you also leave me? And they said, well, we're going to go. You have the words of eternal life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the king. So we got atonement coming up. Um, what is it? Third day night? I think it's third day night, right? When it starts, or two, what they call second day night or Tuesday night? Oh, Monday night. Second day night. All right, second day night, which is the world's Monday night. Hallelujah. After we get finished afflicting our souls, then we'll start preparing for seven, eight, nine, ten days of rejoicing. Yeah. See what I mean? It's going to be a good time. We also got to do our dress rehearsal for Tabernacles too. So we got to eat. We got to drink. We got to dance. We got to shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the king. We just rehearsing for the kingdom. Glory to the king. Let us stay in Israel. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth. Meditation in our heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh, yeah, my strength, my redeemer. You dismiss the most beautiful, precious, strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming name of the only king, the king, and master, a master that there ever will be. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Shabbat Shalom, King coming. Look at him looking.